I think we are two minutes earlier, uh, one minute earlier than the starting time. Maybe we can wait for one minute to, for the to join. Yes. Okay, Mr. Khaled, we're uh, over to you. Huh? Okay. Mr. Al Khair Al Jamia, salam everybody. Uh, the new salam with this pandemic now we can say it, it's not hi, it's not hello, it's not uh, good evening, it's uh, can you hear me? But I hope that uh, everybody will enjoy this session. Normally, uh, the sessions uh, at 1 p.m. after uh, or yeah, it's between the sessions, the keynotes, and the lunch break. It's very difficult for the speaker and also for the audience. I'll try to make it as much as I can entertainment, but also beneficial so everybody can enjoy the session. My audience, I hope my audience will be, uh, you know, CEOs, CTOs, CIOs, and CISOs, uh, IT guys, information security, but also really HR and parents uh, why because really i will be talking about you know the new trend the new jobs the new thinking and the digital transformation it's really affecting everything around us that's why my uh, my uh, title of this slides or this presentation is disturb yourself or be disturbed which means really that we have no choice and uh, really we, we cannot stay in our comfort zone my name is Khalid Al Mansouri. I am an IT expert. I have worked for the last 25 years plus, mainly in IT projects as a CIO in many different countries, uh, in UAE, in Saudi Arabia, in uh, Egypt and India. Uh, I have uh, expertise in my in digital transformation, uh, cyber security, and uh, this is me. Uh, today we'll be talking about the pandemic and the new norm, digital transformation benefits. We will be talking about cyber security also, and we will close with some key messages uh, really to help everybody uh, in this, uh, you know, new world, I will say. So let's go and directly to the session. This is the key word I would love to start with it, really. For those who can speak Arabic, uh, it's about, you know, uh, that the technology has become a necessity at, and it's not really a luxury anymore only. You know, it's in Arabic, So what I'm saying here in Arabic that the, the technology has become necessity and it's not luxury anymore. And with, with more, we are using the, the new technologies and all these nice buzzwords we hear. There will be a lot of new opportunities for startup, for entrepreneurship, for new jobs. But also with that, we have to make sure that there will be a lot of risks we have to really avoid and take care of. So just to wake you up, guys, uh, today we will be talking about IT guys and the technical guys. So let's give a definition first. Uh, CIO stand for what? And really, it's it's. I wish it's an, an interactive session, but at least for the time being, I will tell you and tell you the, the the answer. So the chief is he chief information officer? Is he chief innovation officer? Is he chief integration officer? Or maybe we can say he's chief intelligence officer. And nowadays, really, the CIO and the IT department become 
or became the backbone of any company. You know, in this pandemic, we could not survive without having a very smart, innovative, uh, uh, you know, uh, CIOs who really enabled us to work remotely, enabled us to take all our services online so people can use it from home, from anywhere. Also, our staff, you know, now with this new mentality, with this new pandemic, they demand us to work anywhere, anytime. So really, the CIO is all of the above. The CIO is really stand for Chief Information, Innovation, Integration, and Intelligence Officer. So this was an easy uh, question. Let's go for question number two. Coronavirus, COVID-19. What do you give a position or title for this uh, pandemic? I will say coronavirus is the chief officer of the globe. So maybe he is the CEO of the globe. Is he the chief commercial officer of the globe? I hope maybe he's a chief financial officer where man, many companies went out of the business, many people got laid off and things like this. Or maybe he's a CIO, wow. So let me give my answer from my point of view and also I will keep everybody also uh, have the chance to answer themselves. So really speaking, I will say uh, chief information officer. So let me say why. I have to defend my uh, answer and I have to to uh, really give an answer why we have uh, we have said this the pandemic or the coronavirus is the CIO of the globe because really it pushed us for business continuity it pushed us to work with mobility and remote working from home really the covid-19 or the coronavirus pushed us for innovation and new ideas when it comes to such conference you are attending today you know, to have everything at, uh, to work and attend and, and conference like this with exhibition, with, you know, uh, speakers, with keynote, with things like this. It pushed us with innovation to really think out of the box. Also, coronavirus with putting everything on the uh, on the net, with putting everything in the, you know, uh, uh, online, it became also the chief information security officer of the globe because it started giving you Guys, make, make sure that all your services are online, but you have to secure it because the bad guys now are looking for, for any opportunity to get in and, uh, and you know, and uh, hack your system. It's also start giving us push for some of the bad wars we, we, we used to talk about, like the cloud services, blockchain, AI. Also, the e-commerce is booming nowadays within the coronavirus time uh, and as you can say, today we are attending a nice conference with a lot of learning care with less cost. So even it starts uh, doing smart spending and start giving people uh, things which I always believe in. Believe in these three things. Never stop learning, never stop improving, and never stop innovating. With coronavirus, with all these things became really cheap and easy to have. So, uh, and also, of course, offshoring business start growing. So I can justify my answer to say that coronavirus has really become the backbone of this uh, globe and it's becoming really the CIO of the globe by pushing us to all these things. Okay, another saying, uh, we are saying here, we are really now, uh, uh, I'm saying, I will say it in Arabic, يتطلب من القادة بناء عمل أفضل بعد COVID-19. لذلك عليهم تخيل ما لم يمكن تصوره اليوم. So this this is a message for you guys, the CXOs. This is a message for the leaders. You know that people in the ground, people in in the society, people in the community, they are expecting things from you that you have never been uh, thinking about it. You know. So really speaking, it is for you now to innovate, to think out of the box. So with this pandemic and the new norm, you know. Many things got changed around us, and mainly I, I will summarize it in five different areas. It touched the health, it touched the, you know, the digital uh, transformation, it touched our education, you know, it touched the well-being, it touched the economy. So really, me, most of these things got somehow disturbed within the coronavirus. I have to speed up, I know. So really, I'm talking here about all these five areas and what areas it starts. For example, when it comes to the public uh, health, uh, 
coronavirus or the pandemic, I will say, start um, putting pressure on us to allocate more money and resources and investment on the R&D and the innovation in the medical area, for example. In the education, when it comes to the education, it's really now becoming another era where people and our students and people how how now they are getting education from home so here we have to think about you know ensuring equality and continuity for the students we have to think about student engagement during this uh, you know uh, uh, learning from home also when it comes to the areas of well-being uh, many people during the pandemic and during this lockdown people has suffered even from mental health and things like this especially with the with the isolation so for us here today as a technical people we have to dive on the number two which comes when when it comes to the digital trust you know so i have di divided this uh, uh, to two slides really dive deep in the digital uh, trust when i will be talking about the as is today what we have today and also what our people and our technical uh, people and our partners and these companies, uh, the system integrators and and the service providers are thinking what uh, in advance to to really the to bring you the to be. So today we are as is we are today working from home. We are doing learning or distance learning. We are really having a lot of issues when it comes to data breach, when it comes to fraud, when it comes to cyber crime. Privacy is becoming a big issue today, you know, CCTV and uh, many people are really having a lot of problems when it comes to these things. Also, we need not to forget our parents or I will say the old people who are having a lot of problems when it comes to, you know, uh, uh, limited access to the Internet and to these all smart devices we have today. So the to be. To be, this is a very important, uh, you know, uh, roadmap. So we have to have to make sure the awareness within our community on all this vulnerable, you know, issues. We have a lot of issues when it comes to the financial frauds, when it comes to, uh, uh, you know, uh, risks uh, around that. Also, with all this explosion of the data, we need to strengthen our data collection and analysis. It's not just luxury to have all these data around us. But also we have to make sure that we are utilizing these data and we are doing a lot of nice analysis and coming up with a lot of, you know. Uh, so again, when it comes to identity management, for example, we have to make sure that we verify uh, the people. We have to make sure that uh, we do, uh, we strength our uh, information security as much as we can to stop these hackers and bad, bad guys from disturbing our uh, life. So let's move forward. This is the blueprint. Again, this is the data era. It's the data explosion era. As you can see in this slide, I hope you can see it very well. In 2019, we have uh, every one minute, every second, you can see how many YouTube download or viewed, how many Netflix, you know, uh, uh, movies or in one minute is more than 600 700,000 hit there is a, a tweet or i will say one whatsapp message is more than 41 million or 42 million messages in 60 seconds this is all in so it's really a data explosion and you can see in the left of the slides you know how many sensors more than two, two, uh, 212 billion sensors today uh, there, this is really happening today with us, with this IoT, Internet of Things, and all these smart uh, devices we have. Our watch is smart, our shoes is smart, you know, our mobile is smart, and everything, our uh, smart cities, and you can smart homes and things like this. So really, we are living in a very smart, uh, I will say, a data explosion area. This is a, just a, a screenshot of a mall, a shopping center around you. So here there is a sensor deducting how many people coming in. So they are deducting the traffic. Uh, uh, on the other side, you can see to the left side, there is a, a shop there. Uh, there are a lot of sensors deducting, you know, uh, uh, the stock itself, how many low in the stock, whether people are waiting, people are doing uh, shopping, things like this. 
So really today we have sensors everywhere and we are collecting a lot of uh, data and we are doing a lot of analysis and we are coming up with a lot of, you know, uh, ideas to help improving the life uh, of the people, of the society. And also the consumer himself, if, uh, really the expectation of our consumers has become totally, uh, you know, different. You know, they want and they are demanding to stay connected all the time. So they need their social media connection, they need their mobile to be connected all the time and they will not compromise in this. Also, you know, these guys want to have their lifestyle also from their fingertip. They want to buy, they want to shop, they want to exchange money, transfer money, all of these things, you know, they want it to be on their fingertip. So their lifestyle is becoming more different, they want, they are demanding to be more in control and more up to date. And the main competition nowadays, you know, is on this on the uh, mobile screen, you know, the desktop of your mobile, because the consumer will use your app for a day. If they don't like it, it's gone and he will use another and the competition is very high. So they are demanding fast time to market. They need an innovative uh, offering and they need equality with all this. So digital transformation benefits, I am giving it a title here or I'm going to give it uh, somehow a digital transformation. I will say it is not only about technology, but it is rather about driving efficiencies and improving the life of our consumer. This is what's behind the technology because we can speak to our IT guys, CIOs and uh, CISOs or CTOs and they think digital Transformation is about bringing uh, state-of-art technologies, bringing servers, bringing, you know, some of applications. That's not true. It is really about how to, you know, improve the life of our consumers. And, of course, there are a lot of benefits behind the digital transformation, grow in the market, cost efficient, and also, you know, when it comes to the customer, he will be more engaged and also... And so let's talk about what technologies are near, really uh, uh, there to help us in this digital transformation. A cloud is one of the thing. AI, today in UAE, we have four or five ministries are talking uh, mainly about digital transformation. And we have a minister in UAE cabinet or in UAE government. It's co his, called, his title is Minister of AI. So AI is becoming... The artificial intelligence is not a choice for us in UAE. So even when I'm talking to our parents here, guys are attending, guys, push your kids to go for these studies. Study what the, you know, country is, is, is really interested on. If you go, go and tell your guys uh, or your kids, go and study, for example, law. And he will go and study for four years and, and become a lawyer. And then he will not find a job and stay at home for two, three years and suffer from really mental problems and issues push him where the market is is big need there so what kind of technology is disturbing our environment nowadays there is a cloud there is you know uh, rpa and there is big data everybody's talking about iot everybody's talking about you know uh, uh, blockchain and things like this so a lot of things around us is uh, there we don't want it to be a buzzword you know and we don't want the IT guys to just to keep thinking about, you know, the old CRM billing and things like this only. So really, there is a new role for our CIOs. They have to also transform along with the technologies. So today, the IT throughput is the big issues. Everybody, the management, you know, they are demanding from the IT guys to come up with more agile, more innovative ideas, more experience, more features, but also with less cost, less manpower, less complexity, and less time. So they really want something like this. And this is not easy for anybody with a legacy thinking. That's why we need our technical people also to think more, uh, to think more about, uh, you know, uh, what's going on around them. So a lot of things, there is a lot of IT challenges uh, related to long time to market. Things are complicated. There is, uh, you know, uh, uh, 
many things uh, related to manpower and resources. So every company today, they want their IT managers to have such skills like transformation, like team development, like project execution, like transparency, like, you know, a billing, a business trans, a partnership, but also there are a lot of things missing. Yes, information security, vendor management, all our CIOs, we believe in them. They have all these things and they are able to take our business to the next step and they are able to take our business transformation and digital transformation. I need to rush. So we all know today with better skills, you will have better jobs and you will have better lives. This is the message very important to your kids. Get, tell them if you get better skills, you will get better job. If you want better job, you will be having a better life. Always never stop learning, always never stop improving and get yourself up to date with the technologies. So the profile of successful digital CIO, he has to have innovative mind and he has to have, you know, leadership to really lead this uh, very, uh, you know, uh, good resources coming up now, the youth who are really uh, uh, was who are really born in uh, in digital uh, era they are really born with the with the ipad and they are digital generation era and they also the digital cio has to have a great strong partnership with the business users we have to rush again again the uh, um, as i'm saying digital cio has to think about you know how to build a data-driven organization, how to have automation as much as he can in all business processes, and ha has to really think about bringing digital experience and really user experience, improve the user experience, and make sure the st uh, customer engagement is there. So the, the CIO's focus will be really bringing the latest technology, working in agile projects and agile practice, but also not to, th not to uh, say that we have to bring the latest technology when it comes to cloud and build new capabilities with this organization and bring a new talent, data scientists, you know, security guys. There is no more, you know, uh, old, old, old titles. Even our HR people, when we talk, talk to them, digital transformation is not only IT, it is also HR, even the titles the engagement or the headhunting of the people. Now titles are totally different and skill set is very, uh, you know, very difficult to find. So again, digital world is impacting your industry no matter where you are. This is very, very important guys messages. I hope we will share the slides and you can go through all these things. So the IT department should be ready for all these things. They have to make sure that they have all these technologies when it comes to project management, when it comes to business processes, when it, it comes to agility and DevOps, when it comes to innovation, to build, you know, uh, smart cities or to have a, a lot of analytics, uh, you know, big data and data driven organization and data monetization and payments and things like this. So. Cybersecurity is an area also people think it's only IT things. We will be talking about cybersecurity security more because it's everybody's responsibility when it comes to information security. So again, now we will we are done with the IT. We have also an, another technical role in our organization related to the uh, uh, related to the information security and it's affecting the digital transformation and we don't want to forget about it. And my main message today here that we have to be awake, alerted and right all the time because for the hacker or the cyber uh, criminal, he has to be right only once. Once he is there, he got your data so and you're almost gone. So the what is information security? It's the protection of your information. We just said we are living in the data era. We just said the oil of the of the of this era is the data. So the protection of the information and uh, and the critical data is very very important. You know uh, where it is in 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 in, in, uh, in transit or it's moving or it's uh, in the backup. You need to take care of 
this data and you need to protect it. So uh, this is a, a, a somehow yani, just to make things easy, people are looking for what? The top five data types to be breached, you know, first of all is the personal identification, the authentication, accounts, you know, financial data. So many of these criminals are looking for these, you know, account numbers, they are looking for user IDs, password, credential, and things like this. So what kind of challenges we are facing with when it comes to cybersecurity? The IT department is becoming, or the IT environment is becoming very, very uh, complex. You know, there are a lot of uh, hardware there. It's becoming out of date. Once you are not applying the patches, people are really knowing a lot of uh, holes within these uh, old, uh, you know, router there or server or application where you, you have not, uh, you know, uh, applied the security patch uh, for it. Also, we are having a lot of issues when it comes to lack of budget related to the information security. Lack of staff. This is very important. We are today lack of security experts. And this is a message for uh, for the parents. This is an area where your kids can really go and get a job easily. So if they go for information security or, or uh, computer science data and focus a lot on cyber security, it's very, very easy to get uh, job. Also here I'm saying what kind of layers there where people should take care of uh, physical layer, personal security, operational security, information security, network security. So today, as you can see, there is something called CIO, or this is the security values. If you have to protect any data, so it has to be confidential integrity when the custom, when the confidential means that the right guy can read the data which he's supposed to read or, or access, you know? But also when he has access it, it should be the correct data. So integrity is there. And it should be available whenever he wants it. So these are what we call uh, the CIA, which is the values of information security, that I am having the right to read or access the data, so I need to be confidential. Nobody else can, can access it. And also it has to be correct uh, data I'm looking at, and it's available for me whenever I need to access it. But also now things are becoming more complex where we are adding to the CIA new values like privacy and reliability and safety. Okay, so again, what kind of uh, things can be attacked? As I said, devices, ecosystem, you know, web interface, APIs, uh, uh, you know, uh, data storage servers, uh, third party tools, all these things are, you know, vulnerable and can be uh, part of the uh, bad guy's agenda to attack them. So really, the message today, you need to disturb yourself or be disturbed. So you have no choice. But when you want to do it, you need to do it securely by thinking about information security, by thinking about privacy, and by thinking about, you know, today most of the data leak is coming from inside. So the message here for the HR guys, for example, you need to sign an NDA even with your staff that he cannot, you know, uh, misuse the data he is accessing. Also, for our procurement guys, you need to, to sign with any third party or vendors an NDA, non-disclosure agreement, that they should not use this data anywhere. So you need to have legal things even against your staff because 65% of the data leakage today coming from the inside. So this is the presentation I really uh, would like to talk about today. I hope I, uh, I was clear in my... Uh, a presentation to tell you guys that we have no choice but really to go with the uh, latest technology to go to work anywhere anytime to work with these buzzwords we, we are hearing uh, like ai's and blockchain and uh, and you know cloud and things like this but we also we need to be ready by raising awareness with our staff by really you know making sure that uh, we are implementing these things with with the right partners and with the right tools and the right staff 
thank you very much and I'm ready for any answer uh, questions you want to and also I will share this presentation with the uh, management of the conference so they can share it with you and I am done thank you very much Mr. Khalid Al Mansouri it was really an, an awesome presentation thank you thank you uh, is, is there any question for Mr. Khalid Al Mansouri Seems not question. <laughs> thank you again, Mr. Khaled. Thank you, thank you very much. Again, my also uh, LinkedIn account and uh, things like this. If you want any uh, question later on, because many people will access the YouTube later, and if they are really, they can drop me an email. I can share the slides or share any discussion related to their ongoing projects. With my twenty-five years plus of uh, experience, I can have a coffee and share with you all the you know pain areas or uh, any workarounds and things like this thank you very much for having me for this uh, and enjoy the conference thanks for the organizers thank you very much thank you it's our pleasure thank you